Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. It is summer up north and autumn down south. That's probably the best way to describe it. The summer solstice tomorrow at 3.50 p.m. Central. Anywhere from the Arctic Circle northward, a midnight sun prevails. And this is what we mean by autumn down south. The Gulf already active with tropical storms. There's Alberto, the first named storm of the season. We go back to last night and look at the imagery across Mexico and the Gulf. And we watch this thing come together. It's got a very loose circulation, but you can see these very cold tops popping up in the western Gulf. The deeper convective elements coming on shore in South Texas, Corpus Christi, Rockport down to Brownsville this morning and they gradually work westward into the San Antonio area. We take a look at the Brownsville, Texas radar looking into Mexico and the center of the circulation well to the south. However, these precipitation bands, they're not very well formed. You can see a lot of breaks in between. However, due to very high precipitable water amounts, 2.5 to 3 inches, that means high precipitation efficiencies. So when these cells hit, that rain will be coming down hard. As far as the wind, definitely not a strong storm at all. Sustained winds 40 miles an hour near the center, and in Texas only looking at gusts up to about 20 knots. As we go south into Brownsville, looking at about maybe 27 knots, so this is pretty garden variety as far as the wind field. However, the potential for tropical storm force winds extending all the way up to almost Corpus Christi and down the Mexican coast towards Tampico. Two-day precipitation totals looking like this. You can see that north of I-10 really not getting much at all, restricted to about maybe half an inch to one inch. But as you go south, Towards the Laredo, we rapidly get into three to four inch amounts and the possibility for some very high amounts around Monterey. They may see some damaging flooding there up to 10 to 15 inches possible with that strong upslope component and or a graphic lift. Elsewhere in the country, a whole different set of problems. Let's go back to the northeastern U.S., Heat advisories and excessive heat warnings all the way from Maine into Michigan and Ohio. We had record highs set this afternoon. You can see the current temperatures on here. It is cooling down because we are past afternoon, but still hanging on to 90 degrees at Ottawa. And looking around the map, 88 at Burlington and 80s for Pennsylvania. But earlier today, we saw 97 at Millinock at Maine. Looks like they've been cooled off by some rain. We had 96 at Caribou, Maine. We had 95 degrees at Bangor, Holton, Syracuse, and Hartford. And 94 degrees at Poughkeepsie, which is located about right there. Also, record overnight minimums were set this morning. Burlington, Vermont started out at 74 degrees. We had uh, 72 at Watertown and 73 at Rochester. So... Certainly some very muggy, uncomfortable weather overnight. Hot in the Midwest as well. You can see this excessive heat warning in the Fort Wayne area. They started out at 75 degrees. Chicago started out at 78 degrees this morning. And yeah, it's going to continue for probably a couple more days. We also have a SPC slight risk in Ohio. Let's head up there. You can see there at the bottom some strong storms developing around Toledo, Ohio, and a very spectacular storm around London, Ontario. Heading into the southeastern U.S., in Florida, we tied the record minimum overnight temperature at Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach, 81 degrees and 80 degrees, tying the record set in 2015. You can see this little wave right there. We're looking at a slight possibility of tropical cyclone formation, maybe a depression or weak tropical storm, maybe in this area right here from Vero Beach up to Charleston. That'll be probably on Friday. Let me go ahead and show you the map for that. This is the integrated vapor transport map for this afternoon. You can see that huge plume of moisture going into Texas. However, 
off in the Atlantic. That's the other wave that we're concerned with. And we bring this GFS run forward. You can see this making a beeline into the southeastern U.S., probably arriving late Thursday night or early Friday. Most of the moisture in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico heads into old Mexico and the mountains, maybe climbing up there into the Rockies. And one band goes up into the Great Plains, so that'll be feeding the other area of storms along that front that's affecting Nebraska and Minnesota. We're going to talk about that shortly. Here's another slug of moisture. Looks to be heading to the west. And I don't have the maps down there beyond 66 hours, so we'll just watch for it. At the bottom of this map, there it is. It appears that's going to affect South Texas as well. So probably not a whole lot of change further to the north. As we go further to the west, we've got this stationary front in the central Rockies. We've seen storms breaking out all down the front range down into the Sangre de Cristos, the Sacramento Mountains. And that rain is needed because we had a fire at Ruidoso down there in southern New Mexico. Let me bring up the satellite imagery for that. We go back to Monday afternoon and look at that visible imagery. This is a thunderstorm down in Fort Stockton, Texas. This is a large smoke cloud from that big wildfire. As we headed into the evening, well, that smoke plume grew and you can see this dry line surging in from the east. The wind's extremely gusty out of the southwest, 40 to 50 miles an hour right there. And even around Midland and Hobbs, out of the southeast, at 30 to 40 miles an hour. So this was a very dynamically driven weather day. Overnight, you can see that hot spot. You can even make out the dry line continuing to surge westward. As we go into yesterday, the fire flared back up. Took a little while, but there it goes. And yeah, all in all, they had 1,400 structures destroyed there, 15,000 acres burned. A little bit of a different situation for today. Thunderstorms. There they are springing up there on the mountains. I have not checked the news. Sometimes the uh, lightning, that can be a, a big problem if we don't get much rain out of these storms. But I did see that there were flash flood watches and warnings. So hopefully that has made somewhat of a dent in the vegetation moisture. At least I, I hope so. All right, so let's continue on and keep moving westward. Checking out the southwestern U.S., you can see a very strong southwesterly flow and another wildfire. This one's going up in the Apache National Forest near the Arizona New Mexico border. I know we've got some viewers out that way. You can see that this is some distance southeast of Sholo. That's going to be this fire right there. We can zoom in quickly for a closer look. That appears to be pretty deep into the mountains. Definitely quite a bit of heat throughout that part of the country. El Paso, they were under a heat advisory for today, but they've dropped off to 84 with this thunderstorm activity. There's the radar imagery. A lot of these cells developed east of El Paso, but they're pushing out a very substantial outflow boundary. The warmer air located out to the west around Deming and truth or consequences. And as far as the West Coast area, we're in the process of modifying all this cold air across that part of the country. This little sliver of warm air is about the only exception. The cold air is not infiltrated into Grand Junction and the Four Corners area. But yesterday, some very cold temperatures across northern Nevada. They had 23 at Ely, 22 at Eureka and 27 at South Lake Tahoe. Those were all records. Let's head up north into Alaska. There's a weak segment of the North Pacific High. Another weak storm system in the Gulf of Alaska breaking up the fair weather. In Alaska itself, temperatures are up in the 70s. You can ignore that 23 right there. That's bad data. But we're looking at temperatures in the 70s, dew points in the 40s. And often that's enough to get a few showers and storms going. Believe it or not, they do have a severe thunderstorm watch in central Yukon. 
Have you ever heard of such a thing? They've even got severe thunderstorm warnings for Dawson, CarMax, and Minto. They're looking for strong outflow and small hail, nickel-sized. Yeah, let's take a look at that satellite imagery. We start out yesterday evening and go into the overnight hours. And look at that. This is very interesting. This is the midnight sun up here at the very top. You can see these overshoot tops from these convective storms on the Brooks Range. The shadows are going directly to the south. Very unusual seeing that on the satellite imagery. But we go into today, into the morning hours, and we redevelop that convection up there as we get the heating building in. See, there's the new convection in the Brooks Range, other convection in northern Yukon. And they flare on up, and we get the anvils. Looks like a bunch of multicellular storms, and some of those are going to have wind and hail. The very high temperature dew point spreads pretty much ensures that most of this is going to be gusty winds and maybe some small hail. And completing our tour going into Canada, some very mild weather in the prairies, temperatures in the 60s. But as we go to the east, we get back into that hot weather, 88 degrees in Labrador. And of course, that 97 at Bathurst, New Brunswick. Heat warnings across a huge chunk of eastern Canada from Newfoundland to Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and all the way through Quebec into eastern Ontario. Those go all the way up to Moosonee and Chibugamau. Temperatures expected to be up to 95 degrees in many of these areas with humidex up to 113, which is 45 Celsius. Let's take a look at our upper level chart starting out at uh, 10 p.m. I don't have any afternoon charts, but that's going to be the upper level high centered across New York City. 597 to 598 decameters. The polar front jet coming in from the Central Pacific across the northwestern region over that bear clinic zone, the difference in air masses, and continuing up into James Bay, 80 knot jet, and off into the far northern North Atlantic. Okay, let's bring that forward and just take a quick look at what's forecast. We can see that 594 decameter zone expanding just a little bit going into tomorrow and then starting to recede. That spells that the heat wave is breaking up on the east coast. We see the flow becoming a little bit more zonal and going into the weekend. Yeah, this is more typical of what we see in late June. We can see that the subtropical high seems to be settling in across New Mexico and Arizona so that heat will be coming back for that part of the country. You can see the anticyclonic flow. That's usually an indicator of strong heating in the lower levels. And then going into the rest of the week, that upper level high remains quasi-stationary across New Mexico. So let's take a look at that forecast. This is where we're at right now. There's that precipitation band in South Texas. 1 a.m., most of that precip pushing into the hill country and into the... Eagle Pass, Del Rio area, and then by dawn, a little bit further west into the Serrano del Burroughs, some of that precip extending up to San Angelo and Abilene. For tomorrow, during the afternoon, stationary front through the central plains, we're going to be seeing a slight risk of severe storms in upstate New York, looking at maybe around Rochester, uh, over to Boston, up to Rutland, ahead of this cold front that's dropping out of Quebec. The risk with those storms, primarily wind damage. There could be a marginal risk in the higher terrain around Denver up to Cheyenne and over into the Nebraska Panhandle. There will be a low risk of all hazards, including tornadoes. Much of the Rockies and Four Corners, they're going to be in a general thunderstorm area due to a large monsoon-type setup. The Weather Prediction Center hitting the San Juan Mountains in southwest Colorado pretty hard with two to four inches, so we could see flooding problems there for tomorrow. There's those storms breaking out Thursday night, and then we go into Friday. This is going to be yet another rain day from South Dakota into Wisconsin and Michigan. The Weather Prediction Center has a moderate risk of excessive rainfall for Minneapolis and much of southern Minnesota. 
due to that persistent frontal boundary. Five-day totals in Minnesota will probably be running about five to seven inches. And SPC is calling for a marginal risk of severe storms in southern New York as that cold front continues working south. We go into Saturday. You can see that blob of rain shifting into the Great Lakes area. A lot of precip moving up into Ontario and Quebec. They will be seeing anywhere from two to four inches within this corridor. That's going to be around Timmins, Ontario to Val d'Or and over to Quebec City. That will run through Sunday and Monday. Then just kind of a stagnant weather pattern through much of the country. Kind of a dry system in the northern plains. And going into midweek next week, maybe some possibilities for severe weather in the Midwest. And continuing pretty much about the same going into the end of the week, much of the activity remaining well to the north. And that's typically what we see in late June. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Running a little bit late. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get this wrapped up and posted. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday evening. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.